A lot of students ask me, how do I make my monsters or my enemies move towards the player, but not right towards the player, more like this. They actually find a path that somehow leads them to the player. Now, Game Maker has a few things you can do. Uh, the one I'm going to show you in this video isn't my favorite, but it is really easy, and it might work for your level or your map. You can realize here that two of those ghosts made it to the player. This one's having a bit of a hard time with this method, but... This is very easy to do. So let's show you what we did here and discuss a few of the basics. So what I've done in the ghosts is I've used one of Game Maker's built-in commands called MP Potential Step. And the MP stands for Motion Planning. Uh, there's a whole bunch of motion planning in the help file here. So you'll see there's a whole bunch of motion planning scripts. Right? You can go read about them right, and how to use them. But the way that this one works is this one's called Potential Step which basically asks the object to take one step, right, a certain distance towards your target. So what I've done here just for simplicity is I've made two variables, target X, target Y. I've set them to the player's X and the player's Y position just to make the typing here a little cleaner. And you'll see how potential step works. Try to move towards TX, comma, TY at a speed of four and false means check all objects if it's true, but I've said false, which means only try to avoid solid objects. Okay, so that's one of the limiting things about this method is you basically say, I've said here, avoid solids or you avoid everything. Okay, and uh, that's really what you get with this script. You'll see in a future video, which is going to be uh, the second or third video, I'm going to use this method where you really have full control over what you're avoiding, right? You can really get specific, right, and picky. Anyways, when you use this one, what's happening is the program's basically going through and it's asking the object to check to see if it's going to go in that direction, if it's going to hit an obstacle, if so, it has to turn a bit. So you'll see it does work. You know, when we run it, it runs it okay, and they actually sort of find their way to the player. Uh, I'll show you a few settings that you may want to tinker with to make this work better. Because you can see here, sometimes they get a little lost or do some funny behavior. They go in the wrong direction. Uh, that is just the nature of this script, right? It's not the fully most powerful movement script. Um, but what you can do before the program starts and you call that script is somewhere in your program, just once, you can call this. Okay, so I've done it in this object called global in its create event. It calls this one time, okay? Okay. And you hit some settings, and it's called MP Potential Settings. If you want a full read-up over it, go to the help file, and you can sort of read about these settings a little bit more if you want. But the basics is this, just to give you an idea. What you're setting is things like max rotation. That's the first value. The default is 30. It's telling you how much is the character allowed to rotate, right? So if it's pointing straight to the left, it's only allowed to turn 45 degrees in one step in solving its path. The next one is rotation step. When it goes to solve and check for possible good directions to move, it does this in steps. Like it'll say, by default, it's 10 degrees, and I've left it 10 here. So it's going to say, hey, if I were to go 10 degrees to the left, is that okay? If I was to go 10 degrees to the right, is that okay? And then if that doesn't work, it checks 20 and 20, 30, 30. Right, it does it in steps of 10. Uh, if you make this smaller, it can figure out more directions, but it's going to do more computation and uh, require a little more time. If you had 100 zombies using this, it could start to stall the program. You actually will see it start to stall the program a bit, right, if you overuse it. So, you know, keeping this number reasonable, right, not too small is a good idea. The last one here, or almost the last one, ahead, is how many steps ahead it checks to try to detect a collision. And so here, the default is three. I've increased mine six steps ahead. So it looks a little bit farther ahead. It'll detect a wall farther ahead and make its turn earlier on. Again, doing this, more expensive in terms of computation, but it may make your characters move a little bit better. The last one, on the spot, nice easy one. If it can't find a path to your target, is this object allowed to just to turn on the spot so it stays where it is, but turns, probably, I think, based on max, could it turn the full 45 without actually moving in any direction? So can it just turn on the spot? 
to try to help itself solve. And so you can fiddle with these settings, right, to see what works for your game. Obviously try to pick numbers that are um, as small as possible uh, for this one, as large as possible for that one. So that's the basics of using the ghost with MP potential step. Now what I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to quickly show you how to use this method. This method here is going to actually get the ghost to calculate a path to the player and then follow that path. And so the benefit of this is instead of you having to run this calculation every single step, you're going to run a bit longer calculation once and now that path is solved just tell the ghost to follow that path maybe update it every couple seconds right instead of updating every single step okay so we'll do that one the next one which is mp potential path solving thanks for watching